The Insta360 X4, like most compact cameras, is designed to be picked up and used right away. You can take high quality shots with the default settings, which is perfect for most situations. I think it's the premium 360 camera available right now. But if you really want to unlock the full potential of this camera, you've got to dive deeper into the settings, especially in less than perfect shooting conditions. Today, I'll show you what to look out for and which settings matter. If nerding out to get the best out of your X4 is your bag, then this is the video for you. First things first, let's talk about the shooting modes and which one works best in different situations. Once you tap on the camera icon, the menu will appear. Just swipe left to select the recording mode you want. The choice depends on whether you're in single lens or 360 mode. You probably know that your 360 camera has two sensors. The camera's processor combines the images from both sensors to create a 360 image. When you select single lens mode, the camera shoots with just one sensor and lens. But why would you want to do that? After all, the best thing about this camera is its 360 mode and the ability to reframe shots. Especially now the X4 can deliver 8K video, reframes to high quality 2.7K flat footage. Well, there are two main reasons to shoot in single lens mode on the X4. First off, you don't need to reframe your shot so you can save time later. Secondly, especially if the lighting conditions are difficult, you may be able to get better image quality with the single lens mode. Now, this can be the case if one side of the camera is well exposed and the other isn't. In single lens mode, the camera can optimally adjust exposure to one of the two sides. There's also a solution for that in 360 mode, but we'll get to that soon. Also, you have the option to record in 4K at 60 frames per second while in single lens mode. If your video is 360, the reframe resolution is at 2.7K, a really nice 2.7K, but if you want 4K, then single lens mode is how you get it. But really, if the lighting conditions are good, there's hardly any difference in image quality between a single lens shot and a 360 shot. Only the most dedicated pixel peeper is going to see any significant differences. Now there's also me mode. No need to reframe and the camera keeps you in the center of the shot. Great for those who want to film themselves and instantly share their recording on their smartphone, on social media without any extra steps, or if you really don't want to do any editing. Now, me mode is probably not my first choice because you can only edit the shot a little bit, though you can now get very decent slow motion using this mode on the X4 with 2.7K at 120 frames per second. So apart from what I've already mentioned on those special cases, my recommendation is to go for the 360 mode with the X4. This mode is where the camera really shines. Now to get a hyperlapse, use the time shift mode, but you can also make a hyperlapse by recording a video and then speeding it up afterwards, especially with the new motion ND effect for cinematic blur. Now, if you want to do a time-lapse shot, you could try interval mode. In this mode, you can take separate photos and then put them together into a video. The overall image quality will be the best it can possibly be, but there are quite a few more steps to that workflow. Make your life easy by using the 11K time-lapse mode on the X4. It's a game changer. Check it out, it's so good and easy to use. The two shooting modes we're really into today in 360 mode are the standard video mode and the active HDR mode. So when should you use the standard mode versus the active HDR mode? It's tough for small cameras to handle really bright and dark parts in the same shot. The bright areas in the picture always get washed out and you can't make out any details. The active HDR mode is made for situations like these. It's meant to save the details in the really bright areas of the image. Now I'd only recommend this mode if you're in that exact situation and really want the best outcome because this mode has its downside too. You can't just set it to active HDR and forget about it. Pick your moments. For example, it's not really very good for low light shots. The image will be much noisier compared to normal standard video mode. The active HDR mode also doesn't have as many options for capturing as the regular video mode with 5.7K resolution and 30, 25 and 24 frames per second available. So let's next dive into the details of these recording settings in regular video mode. The resolution and frame rate is what you need to focus on. Resolution and frame rate go hand in hand because the frame rate choices depend 
on your resolution. The camera usually shoots in 8K at 30 frames per second. You can get the highest resolution on the X4 with 8K. You should only lower the resolution if you want to shoot slow motion or you're okay with reframed 1080p and you want to save some SD card space. In 8K, you have the option to select 30, 25 or 24 frames per second. Now remember this rule. If you want to use your clip for a bigger project like using multiple clips for a video, then ideally shoot all your clips in the same frame rate as your video project. So if you're planning on making a video at 30 frames per second, shoot your clips at the same rate. If you want to create your project at 25 frames per second, then you should also shoot your clips at 25 frames per second and so on. If you have more frames per second, your video will look smoother. So 30 frames per second will look smoother than 24 or 25 frames per second. Now, since professional movie makers use 24 frames per second, it kind of gives off a more cinematic vibe. 25 frames per second is the PAL frame rate meant to prevent flickering under artificial light in most countries outside the US and Canada. Now, people usually use 360 cameras like the X4 for action shots or epic nature experiences. So the focus isn't really on getting a cinematic result. What you really want is to create a totally immersive look. So in my opinion, 30 frames per second works better. I'd only go with different settings than the standard 8K 30 in a few cases. And that's slow motion. If you're putting a bigger video project together with 24 or 25 frames per second, and you want to use your 360 clips and maybe in a low light. When it's dim, shooting at 24 or 25 frames per second is better because you get more light. But honestly, the difference to 30 frames per second is pretty small. Insta360 recommends shooting in 5.7K in low light conditions. So bear that in mind, you may need to take a step down in resolution. Next, let's have a chat about slow motion. For slow motion shots, you have to reduce the resolution on the X4. In 5.7K, you can shoot at 60 frames per second. That means you can record slow motion videos at 50% speed in 1080p flat images with good image quality. Even in 4K, you can go up to 100 frames per second for a 24% slow motion effect, and it'll still look awesome on social media. So just so you know, slow motion videos can be cool, but they won't have the same same image quality as full 8K. And that's even if at first glance, there doesn't seem to be much of a difference between 8K and 4K. Image quality is about more than just resolution. So only use 60 or 100 frames per second. If you're pretty confident, you'll get a cool slow-mo shot and the lighting is good enough. The advanced settings menu pops up when you swipe left. You can let it do its thing automatically or take full control and set exposure yourself. Choose manual if you want to control the exposure. In auto mode, the camera will keep adjusting to get the best exposure, but you have some control of things even when it's on auto. Let's start on the left. You can choose the color profile, standard, log, or vivid. The main thing that sets standard and vivid apart is the higher saturation in vivid. Standard leads to a more natural look. But if you're into the whole strong saturation thing and just want to share your clips right away without messing around with editing the colors, then Vivid is the way to go. If you're still planning on grading the colors of your shots yourself, then you should definitely consider shooting in log with the X4. Honestly though, I'm not into log color profiles on small cameras any camera actually. I'm all about the auto settings, but there are times when it can really benefit you. The white balance determines whether your image has a warm or cool tone, but white should always stay white, not yellow or blue. So you need some practice to set the white balance manually. The camera's auto white balance usually works just fine. So I normally keep mine on auto, but manual settings are especially handy for longer shots in consistent lighting. The manual setting stops the camera from messing up your shot by changing the white balance for no good reason. Let's say you're out on a sunny day, aim for a white balance of 5,500K. With EV or exposure value, you can set whether the camera should expose the shot a little brighter or darker. Depending upon the scenario, a slightly negative value might be worth considering. This way you don't lose any important details in the super bright areas of the image. Burned out highlights can't be fixed. 
but if a shot is too dark, it's super easy to brighten it up later. So I tend to set EV to minus 0.3 on the X4. And here on the far right, there is still the feature allowing the two sensors of the X4 to separate exposure settings when shooting in 360 mode. The settings available are auto, standard, and high. Like I said before, the lighting might be tricky. It could be super bright on one side and really dark on the other. Here's an example. You're filming from a dark room to the outside. Then it might make sense for the two sensors of the X4 to use separate exposure settings. Choose between standard and high depending upon how different the light is between the two lenses. That's pretty much it for settings in automatic mode. If you switch to manual exposure, you'll get two extra settings, ISO, and shutter speed. The shutter speed determines how long the single frame of the shot is exposed. The longer it gets, the brighter the image will be. So if you lower the shutter speed, the image gets brighter. The only time I'd bother with manual shutter speeds is in low light. So let's talk about that now. The electronic stabilization on the X4 is top class. However, it requires very sharp images. So if you want sharp images, the camera has to have a super short exposure time. This is great for outdoor filming in daylight with the automatic mode. But if it's dark, especially indoors, the automatic setting will increase the shutter speed to let in more light. But if the shutter speed is too long, the pictures will turn out smudgy. For low light, go with 24 frames per second and 1 over 50 shutter speed. This ratio is pretty good. Keep in mind the stabilization won't work as well as usual at 1 over 50 shutter speed. Pay more attention to keeping your camera steady. But when the lighting is good, I just leave the shutter speed on auto. On the other hand, the ISO value determines how sensitive the camera is to light. The higher the ISO, the brighter the image gets. Unfortunately, cranking up the ISO makes the image look all noisy and messed up. So you wanna keep the ISO value low for better image quality. When it's sunny, you can just set this value to 100. You'll get the best image quality with this. But in low light, an ISO of 100 makes the image too dark. So here you can manually increase it as much as necessary. But just so you know, the image looks good up to ISO 400. Once you get above ISO 800, the image quality tends to go downhill pretty fast. I'd only use ISO 800 if there's absolutely no other option. Keep the ISO at 100 for the best image quality in sunlight and daylight. If it's dark, tweak the ISO yourself to get the right amount of light into the image. 800 should be your upper limit. If the lighting changes while recording, you can set a maximum ISO value here on the left, like 800 max or 400 max. The camera will adjust the ISO as necessary, but won't go over the maximum value. Let's talk about two other settings. To get there, open the main menu and tap on the settings icon. The video bitrate setting is important to us it should be set to high. This is the only way to get the best image quality. If you're serious about saving storage space, go with standard. Now, right below this, you'll see the video sharpness setting. Your X4 makes the image pretty sharp. The camera adds sharpness by increasing the contrast at the edges of the image. This is what we call digital sharpness. It makes the image look a bit artificial. It's not a great look and it's hard to fix afterwards. So if you're going to edit your shots, I would suggest using low sharpness. If the image is looking a little bit soft, just add some sharpness in your editing software. But if you're not into editing your shots, just dial down the sharpness to medium. That's what I do. Okay, wow, that was a ton of information. Let me just sum up the key points. Use single lens mode if you don't want to reframe your shot or if the lighting is uneven. 8K30 would be my go-to default in most cases. For the capture settings, I'd make these changes. Set color to standard or log if you're editing your videos. Set EV to minus 0.3. In dim lighting, manually adjust the exposure and set the shutter speed to one over 50 with an ISO of 400 or a maximum of 800. You should always set the sharpness to medium or even low if you're editing your clips. Check out this video next for my full first impressions of the X4 and its capabilities. I'll see you there.